The Pulse with Andy Blake, presented by Coca-Cola in association with BSP Life and supported by Fiji Link, Fiji Airways and Captain Cook Cruises Fiji. Bulavinaka and welcome to The Pulse. I trust you're having a great evening from whatever part of our beautiful country you are joining me from. Live on my TV, across our my TV Facebook page, including our viewers watching on our YouTube platform. Thank you for your company and especially if you come from Fiji's hidden paradise of Savu Savu. Bulare to you. In this episode, you will be able to win two return flights with Fiji Link to this paradise. So keep watching the show and find out how to. This week, winging it with Fiji Link to the hidden paradise and the Jean Michel Cousteau Resort. <music> Discovering more about South Sea Salt in my homegrown segment. And we sailed to Wongava Island of Kambara in Lao for Culture Explained with Captain Cook Cruises Fiji. But first, my Talanoa session with Emma Volavola. Aside from being the mom to one of our famous rugby players, Ben, she was also one of Fiji's most famous model in the 90s. She flew into Fiji recently, so I took the opportunity to sit down and chat about her latest undertaking, writing, and the launch of her new book titled Running. Well, Bula Vinaka, everyone. Bula Andy, thank you so much for having me on this beautiful program. Um, so my name is Emma Volovola. I come from the village of Nambitu, Tokatoka Tailevu, um, Vasu Choma Kandavu. Um, I was actually born here in Suva at the Ennisley Hospital um, back in 1969 of the 1st of May. I have a sibling, a sister, uh, who lives here in Suva and we were both raised here in Suva. Um, I went to Veuta Primary School, yay! <laughs> And then I moved on to Jasper Williams uh, Primary School and finished my secondary entrance there in Lotoka. And then moved on to Nuttambua High School and finished my third, fourth, fifth form there before I went off to New Zealand and attended Tauranga Girls College. Um, since then, I moved across to Canterbury University. Um, tried, I think, six months at least of the first years of university life. But um, with finances being so tough on my mom, especially, um, I actually had to drop out. But I managed to actually do some work in New Zealand for a while. Um, and then eventually, it wasn't until in the year 2000, I went back to school and I managed to get myself a Bachelor of Commerce in Liberal Studies at the University of Sydney in Australia. So in a nutshell, that's me. I also have two boys. Uh, Milan and Ben. Ben Volavola, as you know, uh, is a flying Fijian and Milan is actually my youngest son um, who is a player agent and happy to say he runs his little company out of Brisbane. Yeah, it's called uh, Vola. Um, I think it's Vola Squared. Yeah. Yeah. Or V Squared, something like that. Yeah, V Squared, that's it. Yeah. You know, by a sheer accident, um, I, it was a favour for a dear friend, um, um, and we're still good friends today, Mrs. Ashwin um, Gibson Blake. Um, she lives in Nandi. Um, she actually was the founder of the Pacific Woman magazine, and um, she wanted to launch this magazine using local talent. Um, and I happened to be available um, at the very tender age of 16 and that was my first go at um, modeling. It was really uh, for the magazine, wasn't for any sort of uh, modeling show. 
um, but that was my first introduction into the modelling scene. Um, I then moved to New Zealand to study and um, when I came back um, I actually met up with um, Mrs Anna Sweetman at the time and she actually asked if I could actually be part uh, of a modelling show that they were having. I think it was called um, Ground Zero at the time um, and that was my first show and that was when I first um, uh, made friends and acquaintances with uh, a lot of the girls that you know, um, like of Zelda um, and Kavu um, and Sandia. So yeah, that was the first, yeah. So yeah, that was pretty much the introduction of the whole modeling scene for me. Okay, so the Red Cross um, fashion show um, was basically a concept um, that I came up with in uh, my little office in Ireland's business. Uh, I was working for Ireland's business at the time. And I've always had the heart to give, to give back. And I've often, I had often asked myself, what is it that I can do in my capacity to give back to society, to give back to those who need help? And I thought, you know, Fiji Red Cross is a great, um, is a great avenue to be able to give back to society. And they do such a great job here in Fiji. Um, so I wrote up a concept and I sent it to the late John Scott, who was the Director General at the time, and sent him the concept of the whole Fiji Red Cross. Um, he had uh, arrived from Singapore, from the uh, Singapore Red Cross show, and um, basically his words were, perfect timing, Emma, can we meet? So we did meet. Um, so in our discussions, um, my involvement was basically taking to him what we could do um, as a charity organization in order to raise funds for the organization and to help those that needed the help desperately. Um, that was my involvement. Um, I was very blessed to have the knowledge of um, two great women, um, Zelda Thomas Page and Sandhya Nand, um, who in their own right have uh, great talent, you know, um, Sandhya is well known for her master, mastery in modeling, in choreography, Zelda is a wonderful designer. Um, so I actually reached out to Zelda and um, asked her if she could, you know, help me with it and I think in turn she actually reached out to Sandhya. Um, eventually the three of us all then met with um, the late John Scott and then the show then just started to build, you know, the concept just grew and grew and I think I was involved in it for the three years um, and before I left um, I had migrated to Australia to study uh, initially um, but left with a, a beautiful memory from the late John Scott with a, a letter just to say thank you for uh, my contribution into the Red Cross and you know I believe so many people were blessed through the show um, and that's one thing that I will always remember the Red Cross show for, is for being able to lend a hand to those that need help. And in whatever capacity we can actually help, that's what I did, yeah, through what I knew I could do. Oh man, Andy, that's, that's a really good question. Look, I'm, I am so, so blessed, um, you know, uh, to be Ben's mum, um, because it's actually a result of prayer. I can categorically say that. Um, because when you're raising a child in a busy city like Sydney in Australia, there can be so many distractions that will pull you away from your dreams and your purpose. The fact that I was able to just keep being constant in his life and being a praying mum um, is what actually enabled what you see in him today. So I don't want to take, um, you know, the whole applause here um, because I know that, you know, the common saying, it takes a village. Um, it took a village to have been who he is today. I have been blessed with having a powerful praying mom um, who has taught me so much about, sorry. <laughs> I get teary because, because I know where I've come from and my love for Christ. Um, I am so blessed that he turned out the way he did. Um, 
as his mom, you know, I can only say that God has been so good to us. It's never easy, trust me. Um, as a mom who sits on the sidelines of every rugby game that he's played since he was the age of nine, you have your good days and your bad days because people don't always love you. People love him sometimes, and when he doesn't have a good day, they will hate him. They will strip everything off him. Uh, it's crazy. It's, it's almost like a, a seesaw kind of emotion where, you know, you're the big star at one stage because people will lap on you the love and the accolades. And if the team doesn't do very well, then you become the target of, you know, people who sit behind their keyboards and um, attack you. Um, you know, and I just, one thing I've learned during this entire experience is people have the right to say what they want to say. Um, and people also need to know though, that every player is impacted in some degree by what they say. Um, but you know, I'm just so blessed that Ben has matured during his time as a rugby player, especially for Flying Fijians, and how much he loves playing for this nation, but for the people. And I think I can say that, that all the players for the Flying Fijians feel the same. Um, he has done me and my family proud and has carried the Vola Vola name so well, so far, um, because he is grounded, he is humble, and he is so very aware of who Christ is to him. Um, I am just incredibly proud that I have him and Milan, who is a great support of Ben. You know, um, we did the journey the three of us from when we moved to Australia, just the three of us. Um, and we supported Ben in his dream. He always wanted to be a rugby player since the age of three. Serevi was his big, the, his biggest idol at the time. And I remember, um, you know, being in the house at my mom and stepdad's house and he was running around saying, watch me mum, watch me mum, and he's kicking the ball and he actually tripped and he banged his head, uh, his mouth, and he lost his front tooth, um, you know, and sorry Ben, but yeah, uh, I love you son, but um, you know, but since then, I, I'm always in awe of how he can keep his eye focused on one thing and continue to just pursue it relentlessly. Um, because so many people have a dream, but there are only a few who can live it. Ben is one of the few. He dreamt it as a three-year-old boy. He is now 32, and he's now living it, you know. So I am just so blessed. I am just so incredibly proud of him, incredibly proud of Milan for being the younger brother that will always support his big brother and has now finally come out of his own shadow that he himself has a profile in the rugby industry as a sports player agent and a financial advisor to all the sports people that go to him. And um, yeah, just incredibly proud as his mom. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Andy. Um, I would love for you to meet her one day. You will absolutely love her. So um, uh, a lot of people know her by her stage name, uh, Esther King. Um, she is the oldest sister to um, my mom, who is uh, Vasiti Mianandrao Nangova. She's the middle girl, my auntie uh, Esther King. Her real name is Litia Kotambalavu. Uh, she actually, uh, sh she's, she's just a, a dynamite. I mean, at the age of 82 now, um, she walks around and acts like she's a 60 year old. Um, it's beautiful because um, she actually played a huge role in my life uh, when I fell pregnant at a very tender age of 21. Um, when everyone gave up on me, she was my constant. 
um, and as an evangelist who goes around still today to churches to minister um, the Word of God through music, um, I have learned so much from her. Um, coming under her covering and seeing her as much as I can, I learn from her so much. There is not one bad bone in her. Um, she encourages us to, uh, to pray. Um, I love the fact that she continues to just teach us the importance of family, the importance of working the Word of God in our situation. Wow, so many things have happened which have been unreal. And for me, the definition of unreal is basically when something happens and then you can't quite explain how it happened or how it came to be. I think for me, it's been the fact that I live in Sydney and I've been able to bless others like I've never been able to bless others before. You know, um, the fact that I got to Australia, you know, with two boys in tow and we had to struggle. You know, it, if I can digress a bit, the reality is, I think people only see what they see, the today and the now. But behind every personality and every person, there is a story. And from where I've come from to where I am now, I tell you, there are poles apart. I often think about, you know, when I was studying in Fiji and uh, I used a one of those pedal machines, those old pedal machines, that used to be my study desk and I was okay with it. Um, every week I would have to use a can of mortine and spray my mattress because it was bug infested. So I, I remember those things because it keeps me humble and grateful. Um, so the very thing that I cannot forget is where I have come from to where I am today. Um, I think my old ways, my character. Not to say that we don't fall every now and then, but I know how messed up I was, how broken I was. Um, the lack in my life. I'm so happy to see the back of that because today I can walk proudly and humbly knowing that my life has come into a place where I have no lack. I'm in a place where I can be a blessing to someone, you know, not to always be a borrower, but to be a giver. Um, I'm so happy that the old life is gone because that used to keep me in the place where I was not growing. But I feel now that I have grown exponentially, um, not just in wisdom, but spiritually, mostly, because it's the very foundation that actually has helped me with everything outside of that sphere, you know. Um, the need to um, be heard, the need to um, actually be someone that everybody knows, you know. The, the whole modeling scene was great, you know. I, I made some really beautiful friends, but that isn't me, you know. And I'm glad that I, I don't depend on that. You know, and, and for others, they, they may want that, and great, great on them. You know, each to their own. Um, but I'm just so glad that I have come into a life where I know there are unlimited blessings. You know, that I am content to be on my own, to be myself, um, not to have my feathers, you know, um, ruffled because someone doesn't like what I've said or what I do. It's okay. It's okay. I don't, I have seen the back of that to actually have my emotion manage me. Now I manage my emotion. 
So from here on end, the trajectory is you just keep on keeping on, keep on loving Christ and loving others as Christ has loved us. Yeah, I've closed that door. The new door is now open, ready to receive. <laughs> wow, Andy, um, running. Yeah, this has been a project that has been a long time coming. Um, I procrastinated, I'll be very honest. And I think a lot of it was fear. Fear of the unknown. Fear of what people would think of me after I wrote it. Um, but you know, it's the very book that I had to write as a, an encouragement. I wanted this to be a vehicle to encourage those that have or will live the life that I once lived. And that was to have a child, you know, out of wedlock, um, to encourage people that your mistakes don't define you. Um, it's been, it took me a bit, uh, about a year and a half um, to complete the book. Um, and I say procrastination is because I actually have laid my heart out in this book. Um, I talk about being, you know, a, a single girl sent to New Zealand to go and study um, by my mum. And instead of coming back to Fiji with a degree, I came home with a baby. And that baby was our Ben. Um, but then, you know, the book is all about celebrating Jesus and what he can do in your situation, regardless if you feel that all lost, all hope is lost. It's a book that will um, remind you that God created you and therefore he is your maker and he is the one that will define you and that's all that matters, you know. Um, it talks about how Ben got scholarships at his scholarship at secondary school and that was just simply through prayer. You know, I share in my book about how I prayed in the hope that single moms, single dads, even parents in general, what the power that they have within themselves to help get their children on the path. Even if they have completely gone off the rails, there is still hope if they still have the breath of life in them. There is still hope for every child, regardless of age. Because I'm a big believer that as long as we as parents are still on this earth, our role, our duty, our obligation is to continue to pray for our children and our children's children and the next generations to follow. So this book is the one thing that was a conviction and a revelation brought to me by God himself through his spirit. And it really encouraged me to write this book in the hope of just encouraging someone. You know, Andy, if I have written this book and it has encouraged one person, that's part of my, part of my job done. If someone can actually come back to Jesus, if someone can actually just know that there is hope, that's my job done. You know, this wasn't written just to be written. There was a purpose behind this. And the purpose is to celebrate Jesus and what he can do for you if you choose to let him. So, um, especially with COVID, um, not now, there's been a lot of restrictions with book uh, bookstores. Um, but I have um, my dear best friend, Kathy uh, Kumar, who lives in Nandi and um, we're going to probably talk about how we can get it on the bookshelves um, in Nandi. But um, people can also get them online. It's, it's available at um, most online bookstores. So it's online at Amazon.com, Booktopia, um, yeah, uh, Barnes & Noble. Um, you just need to um, type in Vola Vola. Uh, and for some reason, I'm the only Vola Vola that comes up. And um, yeah, you'll find my book or just book running and Vola Vola and you'll be able to purchase it online. Um, my mom, um, I usually send my mom here in Suva um, stocks of the book and my sister. Um, and they'll have, you know, stock available uh, for people who are living within Suva and Nelsori. 
and we can post them out if, if that needs to be, you know, if we need to get them out, we will post them out, yeah. So, uh, my children do. Um, for many reasons, they keep me accountable. Um, you know, I would say something um, to them and they would always stop me in my tracks and question the reason why I asked them that question. And it got me thinking, you know, it gets me thinking because I think I can only speak for me, but I've learned um, that we need to give room and time for our children. Because as parents, we often think that because as a role of a parent, we're always right. I have learned that that is so wrong. Like, we should never underestimate the wisdom that comes from our children. And I've learned so much from both of them. How to not always lose my head or get so upset over things that are so trivial. Um, why I do the things I do. Oh, that's easy, actually. I became a mum. I was 21 and I gave birth to Ben in 1991, a first time mum. Of everything that happened around me and what I was doing in the 90s back then, the most memorable thing is having that child, is having Ben and later on the land because I love them dearly. But the fact that I was a young mum at a very young age, at 21, with no jobs at my beck and call, literally broke, living in Sydney, depending on family. Um, that was an amazing time. It was tough, but there is something about having family around, even during the toughest of times. And then you have a child who just seems to just wash all the worry away. That will always be the most memorable moment for me, a nostalgic moment, is having given birth to a beautiful boy who has been such a blessing, not to me, but to my family, and who I have been so openly able to share with our beautiful nation of Fiji as a flying Fijian. From my mom, to always keep my heart right, no matter what comes my way, to keep my heart right. And as long as I live, that is my goal, is to keep my heart right. I'd really love for people to remember me for being the lover of Christ that I am. Always wanting to emulate what Jesus did on this earth to do unto others as you would want them to do unto you, to love others as he loves us unconditionally, and to be all that you can be and to do all that you can do in whatever situation you find yourself in. I would love to be remembered for that, that I was a woman that could do all she could do and be all she could be in whatever capacity I was in, all for the glory of my Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, I love watching a movie, a good movie. Um, I have, and books, I love reading. Um, so my downtime is, um, is spent watching Netflix. Um, I actually would read a movie, uh, sorry, read a book. Um, but I also love to bake. And I think a lot of people that know me know that I always, yeah, take photos and post them up on my Facebook on my muffins and my sourdough. And um, yeah, I love baking, uh, which is really therapeutic for me, actually. I really love baking. Um, and I love going for walks. Um, I call it my prayer walk because it's my time where I have my chats with God. You know, we just have a good old chat as I walk. 
um, and then many times I will listen to sermons, um, uh, listen to some great gospel music that really minister to you, you know. Um, so yeah, a lot of my downtime is just doing that. I, um, yeah. The biggest thing that I love about being a Fijian is the fact that we know who we are. We know where we've come from. Like we have the villages, you know, that basically represents who we are. Like I'm, my, my dad has always taught us to always know um, our relatives. My mom as well, very big on that. I'm a proud Fijian because we continue to keep the connection regardless of where we go. There's just something innately um, in us that always knows that, hey, that's a Fijian there and that's a Fijian there and you're drawn towards them. Well, I am, you know. Um, I'm so proud of the fact that we're, we're so different from other races, not only just skin and the look, but in our character, in our makeup. You know, there's so many things that I've heard in Sydney, especially when you go to a restaurant or a hotel, where it's almost like people have to be trained to smile and be courteous. And the one thing I'm so proud about, which I share to my colleagues in Sydney, is the fact that this is ingrained in us. It's not something that you can teach. And I think that's the reason why people are so drawn to coming here to Fiji, is because of who we are as a people. You know, that we are humble in nature, that we are so giving of ourselves, even if it breaks our back. And that's one thing I'm so proud of because it doesn't take too much to ask and someone will do it. You know, we're humble people. And I love that. I love that when I'm in Sydney and I'm at work and I've heard that there's a Fijian, a fellow Fijian that's actually joined the company or he's actually um, been there for years and I haven't met him. We both get excited when we see each other. And people around us always kind of, you know, kind of look at us quite strangely. And my explanation to them is this. We know who we are because of where we've come from. That's what makes us different. We honor each other because of who we are. So all these facets about us as Fijians is what makes me as a Fijian proud. Bola Vinaka, I'm Emma Volavola, and I'm on the pulse with Andy Blake. Emma Volavola, former top Fijian model, writer and mother to one of our famous rugby players, Ben, profiling her faith and upbringing in Fiji, as well as talking about her new book titled Running. Be sure to grab a copy and get inspired by this amazing woman of God. Time for a short break. Join me in the hidden paradise next. My destination profile with Fiji Link. See you soon. The Pulse with Andy Blake, presented by Coca-Cola in association with BSP Life and supported by Fiji Link, Fiji Airways and Captain Cook Cruises Fiji. The Pulse with Andy Blake, presented by Coca-Cola in association with BSP Life and supported by Fiji Link, Fiji Airways and Captain Cook Cruises Fiji.
your Fiji holidays, Sabu Sabu should be at the top of your list. Especially when you get to visit cascading waterfalls like that. And when it comes to selecting your resorts, you cannot choose anything more iconic than the Jean-Michel Cousteau Resort that offers you some of the best experiences to enjoy in the hidden paradise. Adding sparkle and accessorizing the Savu Savu coastline on Fiji's second largest island of Bano Lebu is the Jean-Michel Cousteau Resort. The resort is a stone throw away from the Savu Savu Airport and a scenic plane ride on board Fiji Link from Nandi or Suva. The resort is all about underwater exploration and even boasts a marine biologist. Bula Club for Kids and Dawn to Dusk Nanny Service means families flock to this coastal sanctuary while adults only dining and the seductive spa will please romantics. For soothing views of Savu Savu Bay, the oceanfront Mures and Suites is my recommendation as they are nested closer to the beach. For extra seclusion and space, treat yourself to a stay at one of the three split-level Point Reef Mures or the Lux Villa which boasts its own walled garden with spa tub and waterfall. Styling is traditional Fijian with thatched roofs, plantation shutters and bright bedding. Another way to enjoy the hidden paradise is by escaping to your very own private island. Here you can swim, relax or just lay on the beach while soaking in all those spectacular views on offer. And when it comes to exploring the underworlds, the diving and snorkeling experience is indeed world class as many would argue that the snorkeling or diving in Savu Savu is by far the best. Fiji is the soft coral capital of the world and because the waters surrounding the resort is part of a marine reserve, you are guaranteed an extraordinary opportunity for swimming with colourful and exotic marine life. Escape into Fiji's hidden paradise and enjoy luxury at its finest. Relax, savor authentic cuisine, culture and explore the incredible secrets of its lush surroundings. I hear Sabu Sabu calling you. Stay at the Jean-Michel Cousteau Resort for an enriching holiday experience. Visit www.fijiresort.com for more information. Fly into Savu Savu on Fiji Link. For bookings and flight information, visit www.fijiairways.com. The Pulse with Andy Blake, presented by Coca-Cola in association with BSP Life and supported by Fiji Link, Fiji Airways and Captain Cook Cruises Fiji. The Pulse with Andy Blake, presented by Coca-Cola in association with BSP Life and supported by Fiji Link, 
Fiji Airways and Captain Cook Cruises Fiji. Bula, welcome back to The Pulse. I trust you are enjoying the show this evening. Before the break, my profile in the hidden paradise with Jean-Michel Cousteau Resort and Fiji Link. Now let's head to Fiji's gateway and discover a popular boutique handcrafted salt brand that is fast becoming very sought after both locally and internationally. Take a look. If your salt brand is featured in Forbes magazine next to recommendations such as aged balsamic vinegar in Italy, caviar from the USA, olive oil from Greece to oysters from the Gulf of Mexico, then you know that your product is extra special. And extra special is truly what defines South Sea salt. Made sustainably from sun, air, love and time, this growing popular brand is exactly the salt that you need to enjoy at your dinner table or gift it to your culinary lab. Okay, well my name is Alex and I'm originally from England. Um, I came here uh, with my husband Will in 1998 as an investor to set up a dive business called Tokariki Diving at Tokariki Island Resort and um, that's where we have been until 2019. Well, the business first of all formed as a result of COVID. So as I've just said, prior to this, we were scuba divers uh, working out in uh, Tokariki Island Resort. Um, we started to make sea salt some years ago for fun. And when COVID struck, we decided that we had to do something. Uh, we couldn't just sit and wait for borders to reopen. So what we did is took a hobby, which is to make sea salt uh, through solar evaporation um, and turn it into a business. And uh, we formed a business called South Sea Salt uh, in 2019. And we actually started selling our sea salt last year. I think it was around about August last year. Um, you know, there is your supermarket sea salt, which, or table salt, which is in effect just one mineral, uh, sodium chloride, uh, with an additive, with an, sorry, an extra mineral, that being iodine added. So that's your supermarket shelf uh, sea salt. Our sea salt is unadulterated. So in, in essence, it's seawater just turned to a crystal and it has over 80 minerals in it. So it was all, the challenge was educating people that a kilo of our sea salt costs an awful lot more than a kilo of table salt and educating people why that was. So it was teaching people about the process and about the different minerals and the different um, um, the different way that our sea salt enhances food. There is a very, diff, uh, very, there's a big difference between the two, basically. South Sea Salt is made on Alex and Will Garland's farm in the scenic Mommy Bay using salt water from beyond the protected Malolo Barrier Reefs in the idyllic Mamanuda Islands. The brand has a versatile traditional salt and a premium luxe finishing salt along with flavor blend infusions of coconut, lime, chili, turmeric and curry leaf and garden herbs. Well, I mean I live and I work in the most beautiful place. Um, what has given me the greatest satisfaction is taking it from just a husband and wife team and now actually employing people. Um, so the greatest thing for me at the moment, thing I'm most proud about is the fact that I'm supporting uh, two people um, and hopefully a third uh, soon to join the team. 
Well, first of all, you can contact uh, me direct. So I am South Seas Salt Fiji on Facebook and Instagram. And I also have a website, southseasalt.com. So you can contact me. I do do um, e-commerce. Uh, aside from that, I am selling throughout Fiji in various different retail outlets. Um, some examples are Jacks of Fiji, Victoria Wines, The Coffee Hub, Indulge Fiji, and, and numerous others. Um, well, I think that um, COVID has given me a tremendous amount of confidence. Um, it has made me think outside the box. It has given me the confidence just to, to try things, which perhaps if COVID hadn't have happened, I would have just been comfortable just in my zone doing my thing. So almost the case of COVID um, giving me the, the confidence and, and letting me just um, go with the flow and experiment, you know, I've got nothing to lose sort of attitude. So yeah, I think in that sense, COVID has, has um, sort of pushed me into doing this. Um, yeah. Well, I think you really, really need to be 100% sure that you want to do this. You have to completely believe in your product and you really have to understand that it takes every single second of every single day, day in, day out, month in, month out, in order to turn something that might be just an idea or a hobby into a viable business. So yes, I think if you really, really believe in what you're doing and you're determined to work hard, then really the world is your oyster. You can do anything. This week in our Culture Explained, we profile Vuangava Island in the Lao Group. I got the opportunity to visit the island with Captain Cook Cruises Fiji and on their seven nights Lao Discovery Cruise. Vuangava Island in Fiji's southern Lao group is an outlier to Kambara Island. The island was once inhabited, but because of the cholera outbreak in the 1860s, it has become uninhabited since. During this outbreak, those that were infected were taken into the caves on the island and left to die. You can still see the skeleton remains to this day, which is a reminder of mortality tucked in between the trees. One of the main visible features of the island as you approach it by sea is the crater-like structure in the center. This is the saltwater lake that is filled with turtles and sea snakes. This sacred island for Fijian culture can be visited on Captain Cook Cruises Fiji's Lao Discovery Cruise. And that wraps the Pulse this week. I trust you enjoyed our show, my Talano with Emma Volavola, my destination profile on the Hidden Paradise with Fiji Link, homegrown segment with South Sea Salt, and culture explained on Wongava Island in Lao. I look forward to your company again next week right here on my TV. For comments and questions, send us a message via our Facebook page, The Pulse with Andy Blake. Remember to like the page and give this video a big thumbs up. You can also watch this episode again on demand via our MyTV YouTube channel and our Eat Stay Love segments on board Fiji Airways in flight soon. Now for some fun stuff. Fiji Link is offering you the chance to fly into the hidden paradise of Sav Sav. To win the two return tickets, all you have to do is share this episode with your friends and family from our MyTV Facebook page and use the hashtag FlyFiji and FijiLink. Remember to set your post settings to public so that we're able to see you share the episode and the winner will be selected at random. So, good luck and Sabu Sabu looks forward to welcoming you. Enjoy the rest of your evening and stay safe. 
ni samo demanda. The Pulse with Andy Blake, presented by Coca-Cola in association with BSP Life and supported by Fiji Link, Fiji Airways and Captain Cook Cruises Fiji.